How to play smaller. Hello, Rat Bags. It's Jade. I'm going to show you exactly that on the PlayStation 5 today. Lots of star tips and how to spend your first few days in this game. Filled with all the knowledge that I've sunk over 120 hours on the game on Steam and a good few hours now on PlayStation. Obviously, it's out on Xbox as well, so these tips will be good for you, Xbox players, too. Let's go. So once you've made your character with a really pretty in-depth character customization, then you can look at the menu settings. So these are some top tips, obviously, but you can make the game a bit easier or a bit harder, and it doesn't affect any kind of achievements or anything like that. You can switch any time as well. So if you're having a real hard time doing something, you can always put it on peaceful mode for a little while, then come back into the menus and put it back on normal. Peaceful mode will just mean that bugs and insects won't attack you unless you attack them. I think at its base game settings, the game is actually pretty tough. You will die a lot in the early days through attacks from bugs. So it might be a good idea to go ahead and put the creature health just slightly lower at say 80% instead of 100% and to also speed up the grind. Small land is incredibly grindy in terms of getting resources, especially from bugs. So it's definitely, in my opinion, worth giving yourself that little bit of a boost. And 100% the full damage at its base game stats is incredibly harsh. There's a slide mechanic in small lands which helps you get around, but it's often uncontrollable and you can be yeeted off and suddenly die. So I would absolutely reduce that full damage to something like 50%. So once you're in, the tutorial has been revamped. Previously, you were given a whole series of little mini guides as you walk through from the underborough. But now we awake on the overworld with some small directions about returning to where we need to go and talk to the first NPCs. Pretty much 80% of the bugs in this game will attack you. Some know like this ladybug will leave you alone. You'll start out with a bunch of meats. There's no real need to go ahead and kill any of them, but there is experience in the game. And the more experience you get, the more attributes you can pump into your own strength, health, and stamina. So do take advantage of some easy quick kills as killing bugs is one of the only real big ways to get lots of experience quickly. Straight away, make that wood hatchet as some enemies are weak or resistant against certain damage types. So your axe and swords have blade damage, so basically sharp edged, and then obviously hammer and stuff like that is going to do blunt. If you tap the L1 or LB button, you'll bring up this special sense and it'll give you the details on the creature's health, its stamina, and this is useful for taming some creatures later on. But also, when creatures can attack you, it will show the damage type that they're weak against. When it comes to combat, dodging is your friend. If you're a real perfect parry master and you've played lots of games like Dark Souls, you should be at home in blocking. If you block right at the right time, you will daze and stun some of the bugs and you'll be able to get a few more hits in. Blocking only partially reduces the damage that you'll take, so you will still take damage if you just hold the block button. So the best advice is to actually dodge. Always dodge backwards, in fact. Especially if you dodge sideways, a lot of the bugs have quite large hitboxes, but dodging backwards is often the best way to get out of trouble. I would advise you follow the path and the direction of these owl effigies. There is a road that leads from where you pretty much were all the way to the next NPC, and you can always check the map as well. Wandering off too early without unlocking some of the recipes for the next upgrade is armor is not a good idea. Try and eat lots of the berries, blackberries that you'll find, and leave any mushrooms or any other bug meats until you get hold of a fire, as cooked food gives you much more benefit. Keeping your food above 70 will mean that your health regenerates over time, so never let it go below that, really. Eventually, if you follow the path, you will come to Hearn, and he'll give you some advice about what to do next, and then you can also go unlock more of the armors. Now, there's two armor sets that you'll get in this area from these NPCs. The padded set will keep you warmer, but offers pretty much the same protection that you've got already on. But it's cheap enough to make, so you might as well. And then you've got the light set, which actually give you a movement speed boost, but no cold protection. It shouldn't be winter for a good while yet, so I would actually work on getting the light stuff just to move around a little bit quicker. If you press RT or R2 on the inventory menu, you can look at your experience and you can see some of the points. I'm pretty close to getting my first level, and each level up you usually get three to five points to spend. A new feature that brought in just for 1.0 is the faction system. Completing world events, there's 15 of these scattered around the forest, basically taking on bugs or waves or defenses, will net you some points. And these points can be used with the different NPC factions to unlock new gear, but also get new buffs. 
Some of these NPCs you won't be meeting for a while, so I wouldn't panic or worry too much about completing any of the world events until you really have got your base set up nicely and you're starting to learn about the mechanics of the game. But for sure, I would definitely put some points into Murnex Tower faction, as your mining tools will do more damage, and I think that's pretty good. The rest of these permanent buffs that you can receive, they will pretty much give you less hunger, stuff like that. You can go and explore the burrow, this was the starting area like I said, but there's not really anything down here, no real loot, maybe just some extra small resources if you really wanted to. Fibre especially is something you're going to need tons of, so always go and pick up the little green shoots, eventually you will be able to get a stronger axe and chop down some of the stalks that will give you a lot more. So close by you will find the wizard, this is the elder guy and he's pretty much going to give you the story about where you should be going next. Definitely do go and talk to him as it will or should reveal the location of some more NPCs, like I said. At this point it is probably likely night time, so you can either camp for the night somewhere down below, but I would advise getting your torch out and run into the tree directly above these NPCs. If you go all the way round, this is where you can go ahead and put your first base. Thing is though, you have to climb the tree. Every other tree that you'll come across once you've done this once, you'll be able to find these little platforms that are around the bottom or just slightly higher up off the ground and you'll be able to go up a lift and claim the tree super easily. But the first time you do it, you have to go and climb all the mushrooms and the branches. In fact, by the time I got to the top and because I'd spent quite a lot of time killing early bugs, it was already daytime. But you're pretty much safe as you climb these. Some of the trees might have some bees or wasps near the bottom, but otherwise the rest of the tree should be safe as long as you don't fall. Once at the top, talk to the statue and you can claim the base for yourself, the tree. So you need to have crafted a building hammer and this is how you can place some of the crafting benches down. You're gonna need 12 resin to craft all of the ones that you should have unlocked by now, 21 wood and 11 fiber. That will get you a bed, that will get you a campfire and that will get you a box as well as the crafting bench. You might wanna bring some more wood as well so that you can build a foundation if you place the foundation over your bed then click on the bed you can actually skip through the night and obviously do make sure you click on the beds so it's your respawn point this trick also works when there's a storm if you're out in the world and you can't get back to base quick enough just put a foundation down so that you can creep underneath it and you won't take any damage from the storm you won't be able to put this stone cutter down until you get a mandible from a bull ant as you're going to need to craft a pickaxe and go and get lots of the stone I would absolutely stock up on bandages here. They're probably gonna be some of the most vital thing. They heal over time, so not instantaneous. That's what potions will do later on. Try and have at least seven to 10 of these on you at all times. And absolutely craft a bow and maybe around 20 arrows if you can. The sword does the same sharp damage as your ax. I'll bet it's a little bit quicker, so not necessarily needed if you haven't got loads of resources. And if you want a ladybug as a pet, well, they can carry resources for you, but they're easy to kill as they've got so little health. That's why you need the ladybug travel kit. You still won't need any of these armors unless you're going and exploring at nighttime a lot where it does get a bit colder or if there's storms. Also repair, repair, repair. If your damaged item doesn't go too far down, you can actually repair it for free. The minute it goes past a certain point, I do believe 70%, you'll have to actually add some resources to repair it and that gets even more as it goes all the way to the bottom. So make sure you always use the repair button and don't confuse it with this mantle. Honestly, you should have killed a bunch of bugs by now and got bug meat that you can cook, so definitely do that. And then you roast the mushrooms, they'll fill your hunger up much, much quicker. And then try and avoid a lot of these regular carpenter ants, as they don't have a lot of resources you need. You really need to find one of the ball ones. Head down to the river coastline and you'll be looking for these caps. You'd also need one of them to make the stone cutter, and you can see lots of these stones that you'll be able to mine. There are specific points in the map that you can go ahead and get lots and lots of these types of resources, but for now you should find plenty near the edge of the water. Also look out for these screw caps, in fact that's what you might need for the actual bench itself, but either way they're both found on the edge. You can't swim, you will die if you spend too long in water, so you always jump across any little crossing like that if you're going across. And you might find that there's an owl statue, there's a bunch of berries on top of here if you want to go and get some free quick food. You do have to cross the river to go to Kalev and that's the NPC that you should be focused on finding first as he'll have access to stone armour and that's the one that you really want to craft. This area is more dangerous, there will be more of the worker ants but more importantly more warrior ants and maybe even some of the bull ants. 
Your best bet at this stage is to run away from them. They can climb quite a lot of branches. You can see there the actual bull ants that you need to kill, but taking two on at once is probably gonna be a tough time unless you have got lots of heals, patience, and able to dodge around. The way combat works in small lands, if there's multiple enemies, your swing will hit some of them and actually make your swings do less damage because it's sharing it against the enemies. So you do want to kind of make some enemies follow you rather than not try and split them up a little bit to make things easier. Otherwise they'll stay alive longer, giving you even more hits and damage. So when you speak to KDev, he'll give you the stone armor set. And like I said, this is the one that you want to focus on crafting and making. It is a bit heavier, but offers more protection and especially against piercing, which a lot of the creatures you'll be facing off against in the early game will have. Now you're meant to be able to craft these armors anywhere now. Previously you had to always come to the NPC to craft them, but they changed that. But it does look like there's a bug at the moment where you still need to return to Caleb. So if you get back to base and you can't see your stone armors, just come back to Caleb and craft it with the resources. So using your special sight, you'll see that this bull ant takes edge damage as the best thing to use. So that is going to be your axe or sword. The axes do swing rather slow. So by now, hopefully you've got enough resources to craft a sword. But you can see the orange numbers mean I'm doing more damage. And once you've killed one, now you can go ahead and craft the pickaxe and start mining things like stone and flint. Next tool you want to get hold of is the crude hatchet. This will allow you to chop a lot of the stalks and get even more fiber and seeds. For that, you're going to have to kill a lot of bugs that will drop chitin. So some bugs, I do believe like wasps and bees, if memory serves me right, do it. But I got absolutely rinsed here. You definitely want to avoid these. If you run away long enough, they will leave you alone. But with the poison damage they do, I think a lot of people might struggle your first time. Unless you're using a bow and arrow. Because these are weak against piercing. And that's what a bow and arrow is alongside the pickaxe. But yeah, obviously I was not fully prepared. So what you need to find is soy beetles. These guys are weak against piercing as well, and these are gonna give you lots of chitin. Well, not lots. You'll get one, maybe two from killing one. So it's a bit of a grind, but you need four of these to go ahead and craft the crude ax. The meat that you get from these also can be cooked into a sausage. And when you craft one, you actually get two sausages. So it's definitely a little bit more value than cooking some of the other bug meats. With your pickaxe now, you should be getting as much stone as possible. Across the lily pads here, make sure you don't fall in, you will find even more as well. And this is all in that starter area between where you started off the game and went to the first tree, so you can't really miss it or get too far away. The further you start exploring out, the more dangerous the bugs you're going to encounter, so really don't do that until you've got a full stone arm set. And then it's just the grind for killing more of the soy beetles that you'll find around. If at night time you get stuck, be careful because nighttime creatures come out and they're basically stronger variants. You'll find ghost ants, which can do a bit more damage to you, as well as ghost grasshoppers too, which are more formidable. If you do get a chance to see a grasshopper, you will be able to tame one, but you're going to need to craft the cauldron first to make the treat needed. But here on the map, this is all the areas that you really want to be. I may go up to Drusana in this video, but I wouldn't recommend that as that is getting wings, but you need to kill a whole bunch of flying insects for that. But if you're looking for your first set, that more than likely will be the first opportunity that you get to have some wings to glide around. So now I've got all of that stone, place the stone cutter down and it locks even new recipes, including the flint set of tools. And it should unlock the apocryphy and the cauldron crafting stations now too. So these are kind of optional things, but like I said, if you go to the northeast to Drusana, that's where you're going to get the recipe to craft your very first wing set. And you can apply the wings to any armor. It is a lot more dangerous though. You will come across a lot more soy beetles and wasps and maybe even some other deadly creatures. But look out for things like honey crumble that you'll find on the floor. And try and kill a lot of the butterflies because hopefully they'll drop insect wings. And this will give you the option to craft some what you need later, as you're going to need that for the wing set you get from Jusana. Bunch of strawberries here, you'll be able to get them with the crude axe. And the honey crumble, if you pick it up, you can eat it, but more importantly, you can make healing patches. These heal you three per second tick for 20 seconds instead of two. Jusana is under a table covered in beehives, so look out for any dangers, but they should maybe leave you alone. Sometimes though, the bees nearby can come in here, so you're not 100% safe. There is a bit of food that you'll be able to take, including a caramelized ant head. But more importantly, you've unlocked the recipe for the wings. It does need 12 chitin as well, so you're gonna have to kill a lot of them soy beetles to hopefully get some. 
You might have noticed some poppy stalks. You should be able to harvest these with just a regular wood hatchet, so make sure you get some of these. This is how you can also get some seeds too, as well as nectar and petals. Top tip, you can actually move your base to Drasana. You find one of the trees nearby and just go up to the little statue and claim it. Remember, that's a great feature, so utilize it a lot when you're gonna be spending more time in one area. You can then just call a lift and go up to your base. If you go ahead and craft some of the seed oil, it'll unlock a bunch of new recipes and make sure you also craft some of the refined wood. Now you've got hopefully some chitin, you'll be able to craft the crude hatchet which you'll be able to now go ahead and use on things like garlic hedge and some more of these mauve plants to get more wood as well as fiber. As the storms approach, it is gonna get colder, so your health will start to go down. So obviously make sure that you are ready to go back to base. Now here's the best hack of all. You can return to base just by exiting out into the menu screen and going and loading back up your world. You don't have any penalty for it. You don't lose any items. In fact, it's a really cheap and easy way just to get back to base. Go ahead and craft your cauldron. This will give you the access to get better items for food and importantly, the grasshopper treat. A lot of the food is going to give you the same buffs. It will obviously stop you being hungry for a good amount of time, but there's never really any need to craft any of the complicated ones as they don't give any real big bonuses. So always make sure you get a couple grasshopper treats because they're easy to lose in the early days. They haven't got loads of health. I've done plenty of guides on how to tame them and it's still the same process even though they're a bit older. You just simply bash them until they're low health and then it'll give you the prompt to feed them the tree and then they'll be yours. You don't need to craft any saddles or anything after that. If you follow the rivers down towards maybe the oceans a bit more, you will come across a bit more deposits of flint and especially on the coastlines where it's actually beach on the south of the map, loads and loads of flint. So you've been wondering where to actually find it. This is where in these small little places. And that pretty much wraps up the basics of survival. You don't have to rush to Drasana. You can build yourself up, make sure you've got plenty of food. Go ahead and craft the padded armor set and build up your base and start actually making a home instead of living under a foundation. Your construction items and benches and chests can take damage from storms eventually. So you will have to put some protection over them, but you can just go ahead and use the repair hammer to repair them as well for a little while until you get enough resources to build exactly what you want. I've covered small land extensively over the last couple of years, previews, and then for the last year in early access. So do go and check out them guys. Like I said, most of them are still pretty valid. Not that many changes have happened with certain things. And of course, I will be doing even more guides showing you what to do and also explaining a lot of the brand new endgame content that's gone into the game. So until next time, Ratbags, I'll catch you later.